You guys know the drill. Smash like for 600 days. <laughs> Welcome to the largest Minecraft mod pack possible. A video series inspired by the amazing Luke the Notable. I guess this is my first face reveal. I mean, many of you have already seen my face, but I would just like to start off. Thank you guys for such a fantastic year. We started with, I don't know, 10,000 subscribers at the beginning of the year, maybe even less, and now we have 700,000. I just wanna thank each and one of you guys for just being so amazing, so supportive on every single video, and I'm glad that you guys have been on this journey with me because it's been a lot of fun. I just wanna let you guys know three things that will be happening. A Minecraft server will be happening in about two weeks, but it's going to be a much different Minecraft server than your usual Minecraft server. It's gonna be actually insane. The second thing is that I have a second channel and you need to subscribe right now. And the third thing is that please support my second channel. Yeah, I know I already said that, but if we hit 69,000 subscribers on my second channel, I will play scary horror games and I will cry for you. Oh, and if you haven't seen the first 400 days, you probably wanna watch that. The link for the playlist is down below because then this video wouldn't make any sense to you. I streamed the first five days because it was a special event. We were going to the moon. I made a little runway going all the way to Binos. And this is where we would launch our rocket ship to the moon. The only problem is that Binos wasn't as friendly as we thought. While we were getting preparations for liftoff, turns out we actually didn't have the necessary equipment. That equipment being thermal padding and we needed it so we wouldn't freeze on the moon. So all we had to do was get some wool so we could craft up this padding. But before we were able to, we got some message from Binos. I promise you won't even spend an entire day on the moon. I will end you. That was very heartwarming from him, and it just encouraged me to go to the moon more. But then he tried to give us a hug, and I felt kind of uncomfortable. Okay, are we safe? Oh. Luckily, we survived. There were no sheep in the overworld, so I had to resort to killing sheep in other dimensions. Multiple dimensions. And just like that, we were ready to go to the moon. We put in the electricity, we put in the gas, it was time to fly! It's happening, boys! It's happening! Ah! Bye bye, Beanos! I'm coming to slay you! We're leaving everything! And bada beam, bada boom, we were in space. And since we were in space now, you know what that means? We got our own space station! Hey, hey, hey! We got a space station now? We had some some uninvited guests though. I have no idea how Shrek got on my spaceship, but he broke down my door. Nonetheless, it was time to see what was on the moon. Slow and steady. As soon as I landed, I had to deal with skull troopers with helmets. I ran away as fast as I could and I came across this bottomless pit. I thought it was safe, but it turns out this pit turned out to be another maze. You know it's bad when creepers are living on the moon with a helmet and a jetpack. And then we found it, the boss room. It's the battle boss, what is this? Evolved skeleton boss, yo, hey, oh, He's grabbed me. Ah! I got a, I got an assault rifle. I'm, a, I'm not afraid to use it. And just like that, he died. <laughs> we grabbed the treasure and we got out of there. But when I got back on my ship, there was something wrong. The emergency destruct system is now. What is going on? What is going on? Beanos has infiltrated my ship and it was going to explode. Beanos, 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 Beanos. Ah! He nearly killed me as well. I tried to prevent the spaceship from exploding, but it was too late. And now the video begins. It is day 406 and somehow we're returning back to Earth. Everything looks crazy from up here. Oh, Benos is corrupted and evil. Well, this just proves that every bad thing that's happened to us is his fault. I spent the rest of the day cleaning up my base from the mess I made before I left. And of course, storing all the new valuables I got from going to the moon. The next day I realized I wanted this castle to be multi-level. So I started working on the second floor, not including the basement, of course. And of course this took a lot of time because there's a lot of square feet to cover. A Lots of square feet. Day 400 day, I realized I actually ran out of stone slabs. And I didn't want to wait a long time to smell my cobblestone, so I decided to make the diamond, I mean obsidian level furnace. The obsidian furnace is a way upgraded regular furnace, which makes smelting 10 times faster. This was a gold furnace, and look how much faster it was already. And voila, obsidian furnace. I cleared some room in the back of my store system and added a little bit of area. I set up a double chest into the obsidian furnace, and oh my god, look how fast it is. It's like ka -chow fast. The next morning, in New nearly had two stacks of stone in less than a minute and I was able to finish up my top floor and just a couple more pieces and voila the whole place is complete I mean yeah it's just stone slabs but at least it's complete I still had time so I thought it would be cool to have a giant door made out of those blocks I got from the twilight dimension what do you mean special blocks just look at this if you right click whoa they just disappear and then after a short time they come back 
I was missing a couple of blocks, but I would fix that later. Day 410, I finished up the big door, and honestly, the door animation is completely sick. Don't get me wrong. I could look at that all day. It just didn't look really good. I think it was because the room wasn't finished, but I knew I had to at least take out this space room that went to the evil Beanos. This was something I made quickly before I flew to the moon, and honestly, it didn't look that good. And I also spent all night taking it out. I didn't give up on the door yet. I decided to put a giant frame around it. That didn't look good, so I also tried these pink glass, but honestly, it just didn't work i just gave up on this project for a bit and i put everything in a chest i went down to my underground layers and wow does this place really need a makeover <laughs> it is a mess and you guys probably noticed all my workers died too the next day one of my plans for this base was to have a liquid coming down from the top of my base that went through and in between my staircase my plan was to use this red coloring but that was made out of rotten flesh and i had nowhere near enough i looked through the liquid tab for a while and there was a lot of cool colors i mean basically any color the only color i can make a lot of was this light blue color that came from molten glass it looked pretty good from what i was seeing i just had to wait overnight so i had buckets of it day 412 i had to line up a 4x4 space that went all the way down so the liquid could flow down nice and easy at this moment i had no idea if this lined up or not i also made this layer that would hold the liquid all the way above my base so it would fall all the way to the bottom of my base and the next day i started pouring in the light blue and it looked really bluish and it lights me on fire i forgot that it's melted glass so it is as hot as lava. This was also the moment of truth because now that I poured in the liquid, it's gonna start falling down all the way to my bottom of my base and it looks like I calculated everything right. Nice, it's going all the way to the bottom. It's looking good and yes, I think that's a success. No, 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 what is this? It's going over the stairs. No, 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 how? My game crashed. When I came back online, I took out the blue juice and honestly, I don't even think I liked it that much anyway. Workers aren't the way to go. Maybe we need to go into automation. I love that word, automation. But basically, all the these farms that I have on this bottom floor, they also work with electricity. The only problem is that I don't understand anything about like modded electricity and transferring energy and all that pizzazz. I had this transfer node hook up to my generator, which actually worked, but it was way too expensive, like the actual pipes. I tried some other cheaper solutions, but they did not work. I also spent the next day researching and learning, but they are all fails. And all these tests came with a price because I needed a lot of redstone for the pipes. Day 415 was the moment of truth where we learned how to make these red pipes they were cheap and they transferred energy from my generators to my farms easily i started clearing out some area in the back because that's where i was going to put all my generators for the power and after doing some research i learned i could make this fancy smancy thing that turns any block into power the next day i started crafting up these fancy smancy machines and i'm not joking any sort of block you put into the machine like dirt grass whatever it turns it into power it was great i put all my trash items like cobblestone in there and shaboom it was making power and then i would connect the pipes to the generator would hook up to all my farms so they would all have power and the best part these pipes were underground so you wouldn't see any of them day 417 all my farms were hooked up and this system allowed me to have even more farms in the future but with all these farms hooked up i actually didn't have enough power so i had to make even more generators i ended up making four of these block eaters for energy and i filled them all with cobblestone the energy pipes were really easy to get because all i needed was glass and redstone and with my new obsidian furnace everything was so easy i just want to let you guys know i cut about 90 percent of the crashes and i have an rtx 2080 there's too many mods in this mod pack the next day my block eating generators was just eat through the blocks too fast so i needed to pipe in items from like a triple chest double chest whatever so items would never run out i ended up using wooden hoppers please no bully i really don't have any iron i towered these hoppers all the way to the top of my base and then i just hooked up double chest and filled them with cobblestone that way i could easily fill up these generators with thousands of blocks without leaving the comfort of my home the next day i just went mining and got some of the basic materials especially like iron and redstone the same thing the day after on day 420 man i was just growing my plants yo but seriously the reason i needed all these resources is because i used them all in the pipes and the machines and all that stuff i had to make an alloy smelter that allowed me to create pipes and those pipes extract resources from my farms and oh who thought it was a good idea for emperor scorpions to spawn in the main base and i can just connect it using my power down below and these plants that i've been growing on top they're called ender lilies and they eventually grow up to be ender pearls day 421 i learned that these lilies only grow during the dark so i had to give them some cover but then i realized i only did them for one because i'm too lazy why do you need the ender pearls you ask well if you combine the ender pearls with the iron ingot it makes a green little bar i needed a lot of these tiny green bars because those green bars would turn into pipes that would take out the items from my farms the next day was a big day because now we were actually
actually gonna have the resources to make these pipes I just needed a lot of sand and then I had to do a lot of fancy crafting and just like that We made the green pipes also known as the item conduit pipe since I made the pipes the previous day Now it's time to make a ton of farms You know what the best part of having this all being automated and all machinery now I don't have to share all my food to the workers, So all the food is for me <laughs> Oh and for some reason I got an ultimate axe which is one of the most powerful axes in the game and I have no idea how I got it day 424 now that I made about 30 more farms I had to have room for it So I started making my basement multiple levels. I had room for three floors I had to clear it up a little bit, but it was ready for the farms with all this room I could make an entire side just for wheat and another side just for trees the next day I realized I'm gonna have a problem soon a problem in power I haven't even hooked up my new farms and these generators already went through 60,000 pieces of cobblestone. I ran out of cobblestone You never run out of cobblestone on top of that I had to switch to dirt and I don't have that much dirt I had to find a new power source soon But for now, I just started clearing out the areas where the pipes would transfer the energy day 426 my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined I forgot trees need at least six blocks high in order to grow well problems for another time I started hoeing up my wheat farm placing these cropping sticks so the plants can grow and all my wheat farms are ready the next day I knew I wanted to go exploring again so I just made a couple more of these red pipes I just hooked them up to some machines so something would be done while I was gone on my little vacation also we still have this one dinosaur I don't know what to do with him so please leave a comment down below because I don't know he kind of just sits here all day I really want to explore but I wanted some sort of flight system so I made this glider and it actually worked really well I could glide around now that we can glide I thought it was a really good idea to go to the aether dimension but the next three days I spent my time flying around in the aether dimension I found this really weird structure before but I never went to it because I couldn't just like build a cross I had to fly but now I could so <laughs> inside were a lot of mobs waiting for me but nothing too crazy except for the dudes with blasters and sadly there was no loot I decided to build as high as I can so I could fly as far as I wanted it would have been that simple if I didn't keep on getting knocked off by these flying beans that like blow out of their mouths and they keep on knocking me down. I decided to show them a little bit of American made weaponry. <laughs> I finally had some peace so I could build all the way up, but you know what stopped me this time? My game crashed. And when I came back, these flying muffins were waiting for me again. I came across this tiny island, but the only thing in it was flowers. Just flowers. I checked underneath. Don't worry, there was nothing. So I just kept on flying until I found something interesting. I found this maze thing that I completed in the first 200 days or 100 days. I don't know, but I did it already. There was also a bridge in the middle of nowhere. It was just there a bridge was here. I don't know what it was purpose It was just a bridge and that's all I found after searching for thousands of blocks. So yeah day 431 I just came back to my base to regroup, but I wasn't satisfied with my last adventure I decided I was gonna go to the anti-dimension or the termite dimension because I heard both of those places have really good loot What I didn't know if I were to go to the termite dimension I would actually lose all my items So that's for sure something we could do for our 600 day series I got all my equipment ready and it was time to go to the anti-dimension the next day it was time to travel. I made sure to capture one red ant and I also right clicked on one to travel. I spawned in the middle of stone. <laughs> wow, more dinosaurs all over again. Look at this dude. Look at the look, look at his face. Look how long it is. <laughs> I knew that these temples were where all the loot was, but I didn't know what this one was. It had like water at the bottom. It looked really creepy. I wanted to play it safe because I know there's mobs down here that could instantly kill me. Whoa, what is this place? This place looks awesome. There's like lava on the side. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna die. Oh, it's the Naruto guys all over again. Everything is on fire. Everything is on fire. <laughs> there was also blazes and they were way more annoying because they kept on spawning. There were so many of them. How many spawners? And the funny part, the only building block I have is wood and it kept on burning eventually i broke through and i got a lot of loot i mean the drops from these guys were insane i had so much coal and quartz it was insane so much fire <laughs> i found these guys for a bit though because they get so much loot more loot than the actual chest themselves eventually i just dug myself out and it was worth it because i had so much loot one of those loot items was this nightmare sword and it was really good i mean i did kill this giant flying butterfly in like 10 seconds i spent the next three days in the anti mansion and the glider made it really easy to move around. My goal was to loot this obsidian slash bedrock looking thing because it has the best loot. The only problem is that there's so many monsters. <laughs> I was so lucky that I got knocked out. I was in there for like 10 seconds and look how much damage they did to my armor. But I did get to grab this giant squid zuka. It's huge. Just look at it. I decided to raid the temple with the snakey boys instead because it was something I could manage. Don't worry. I fired like 10,000 squids in there and it actually worked and they killed all the snakes. 
And for the last snake, I just used my portal gun to send him somewhere else. I ended up getting myself an ultimate chest plate and even an ultimate sword. Ultimate sword versus stone giant. Ultimate sword wins. I found another challenge area, but this place had aliens. Like, actual aliens. Like, there's no way I was going in there. I just took all the lapis and left. I ended up returning home, which was a blood moon. It was pretty annoying, especially since my armor was about to break. But the main reason I had to come home was because all my backpacks were full. Day 436 has been stolen by Binos. It is day 436. And you're probably asking, how are you flying? Are you cheating right now, Socks for One? Even better, your boy learned how to make this belt that allows me to fly. And Socks, why are you digging in this meteor? Well, you know how I said that we had to leave the anti-mention because all my backpacks were full? So it turns out I can make something called an ME storage system that allows me to transfer items from an ender chest into the storage system. You heard me, you can take stuff out of ender chest and put that in your storage system. Socks, that doesn't explain why you're digging into these meteors. Well, these meteors have a certain like modded template that I need in order to build this ME system. I also forgot to emphasize how amazing it is to fly. This makes my life so much easier. Like I can find these meteors no problem. I was having so much time flying that I really fought anything that I saw, even these like giant bugs. And since I had like two pieces of ultimate armor now, nothing really hurt me. I killed like two bosses in a day. Look at this mole, dude. I actually fought and I killed a giant mole. The next day I kept on looting up these meteors for their little inscriber pads because I actually didn't know what I was gonna do with them. And since I could fly now, I could easily loot up all these danger areas that I kept on avoiding in the overworld. Almost full ultimate gear, baby. And of course, I took all that iron now because it was just so easy. Flying just made things so much easier. I looted every single dungeon near my base. And the same thing happened the next day too. Turns out all these people's houses were made out of wool, so that fixed my string problem for years. Have you ever seen a man floating with an AK-47? I don't know what this spawner thing was, but it had another squid zooka, so I guess it was a success. I was basically unbeaten in the overworld now. The only thing that still gives me trouble is the Emperor Scorpion, just because of the poison and all. And I raided my last meteor, and I was ready to build my ME system. For the next 10 days, I'm gonna be building this ME system. It's a storage system that is online, like you save your blocks on a flash drive. The reason for building this is because when I constantly go on raids, my inventory keeps on getting full. This will allow me just to dump all my stuff in an ender pouch that goes into my system. On top of that, all the resources made from my farms down below, they can automatically go into the storage system. It took me several hours just to learn how to make all this and it would be way too complicated for me to explain it all. All you guys need to know is that it took a lot of materials, but the one important material that I always needed was the Certus crystal thing. But everything else was like, you would use one material to turn into another material that would turn into this material and blah, 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 modded stuff. And after hours of grinding and learning, this was my ME system. Not as cool as I thought it would be, right? Quick explanation, that purple panel is where you actually search and you can grab items and also where you put in the items. This is the ender chest, so anything that goes into the ender chest can be put into the storage system. And then the actual storage area that only has a 1k flash drive, meaning I could only store 1,000 blocks in it, which was actually nothing. Everything else is just weird modded stuff like power and blah blah blah. It was day 451 and it felt so good to finally finish this system. The storage system itself can only hold 1,000 units and I didn't have enough materials right now to upgrade it. And when I mean materials, I mean these certized crystals or something and it turns out I could actually grow them. So you see these little tiny seeds? Those were gonna turn into crystals. But you know, it's not completely overpowered. You can't grow like infinite. It just doubles it. The next day while I waited for my seeds to grow, I thought it was a good idea to put all my farms together. I also switched power sources to this giant coal generator. This is also because the block eating generators ate through all my cobblestone and my dirt. And since I had power now, I could actually attach all my farms with the power pipes or the red pipes. Today, 453, you remember these green pipes that we made? Well, these are the pipes that are going to be transporting the wheat or the sugar cane all the way into my storage system. I just didn't know how I was going to get it to work. <laughs> it was going to be a little bit messy, but I had to get all the green pipes to connect to each other and then all go into one ender chest. Eventually, all the farms were connected by green pipes and they all went into one chest. Every other farm looked okay except for the cow farm. That looked horrendous. The next day, I just filled out all my wheat farms, connected them all with power, and as you can see, all the green pipes lined up into the ender chest. For some reason, though, none of my wheat farms were working. They were and growing any plants. I realized I actually put them one block too high, so I had to rebuild them all. <laughs> Day 455, I noticed I did complete all my wheat farms with water, but they weren't actually growing anything. That's because I didn't have any seeds. 
But before I was going to get the wheat seeds, I had to replace all the rest of the farms because turns out it takes a while to replace 30 wheat farms. You know what frustrates me having almost like 500 mods loaded is that you get everything except for wheat seeds. I spent an entire day whacking at grass just to get wheat seeds. As you guys know, all my farms are linked up into one ender chest and that ender chest dumps it into my ME system. However, it only has 1k storage, so we're gonna have to build this 64k storage unit soon. But I was still way too poor for that, so I was just gonna make a lot of fish farms to go with all my wheat farms. I started clearing out the area on the other side, put them all in side by side, fix it up a little bit, and then finish them all the next day. But they weren't hooked up to the ender chest, but as long as they were making items, that's all that mattered right now. Here's how my base looks like when I just like fly around. It's really ugly, but you know, it works for now. Also, here's my squidzooka versus those weird cats. Die cat, die you weird looking desert. Oh, it's still alive. Also, I took all the cactus from my old base because I was gonna make a couple of those miners dreams. Day 461, and you're probably asking, what are minor dreams? Well, if you simply right-click, it destroys all the stone in the area, and it shows all the ores. I'm upset that I didn't get the clip where I actually clicked it, and it happened, but this is how it looks like after using it. I was looking for a certain crystal so I could upgrade my Emmy system, but it was so annoying because there were so many ores. There's more ores in this mod pack than there is stone, so I couldn't even move. It didn't even do anything. I decided just to go through caves because that was way easier. Today was a big day. We were going to go get ready for an adventure because I was hurting like my brain was actually hurting from all this thinking this time I was gonna be prepared I made so much flex tape so I could repair all my armor also I was gonna make this ender pouch which is a mobile ender chest so I could dump all my items into my ME system I was ready for my adventure I had over 1,000 slots available for storage and I had so much backup material that I was ready for anything for the next four days we were gonna be battling it out in the ant dimension I went balls deep the first time and I went to the hardest maze right off the bat and I grabbed everything I could the only thing I received was my armor starting to break, but luckily I was prepared with my flex tape. I battled it out many more times, but using my portal gun as an advantage to get in and out. I did eventually give up. I did find my worst nightmare though. It was a whole area of the mafia bees. These guys weren't as scary as they used to be, so I took out all their spawners as quick as I could. After slaughtering the entire race of bees, I finally was able to loot all the chests. Thank the Minecraft gods for this ender pouch, because then we wouldn't be able to take any of this stuff. And I don't even know if you guys realize this whole place was made out of gold and coal so i took everything i mean everything i tried installing a mine called vein miner and it would automatically mine all of this but it just didn't work so i just mined manually all the way through the days and nights day 467 it was time to fight these aliens now that i could fly i could actually just hover above them and they couldn't do anything about it i took out the spawners and then i killed whatever these guys are what are they like tentacle looking Ugh. honestly i wouldn't be able to raid any of this stuff if i didn't have this ender pouch linked up to my ME system back at home. I also got a freaking ray gun, but he just explodes everything and I can't see anything. The next day I just continued, but this time I had an ultimate bow and it just destroyed everything. And oh my God, what is that noise? It's like ear piercing. After raiding the weird aliens, I almost had a full set of ultimate armor. Now that my armor was much stronger, I felt more comfortable raiding these weird dragon places. You know, the problem isn't the dragons themselves, it's the constant knockback. But the raid was definitely worth it because I got a freaking an hoverboard man a hoverboard this is definitely one of the coolest items we've gotten so far day 469 we actually had a problem my whole me system was completely full that means we already raided over 1000 different types of items or 1000 blocks i fought these snaky boys for the rest of the day and there's also these flying like spaceships that drop creepers i have so much loot oh my goodness the next day one of the items that i got was like this enchanted golden apple that said don't do it and of course i did it and you Yo, what is this? I just summoned a giant tree. The loot on the tree though is really bad. I had another one, so I decided to put it on top of the tree I already made. I think I might've just broken the game. I still had room for one more raid, but other than that, my ME system was completely full. Day 271, I spent this entire day looting up these guys because they just gave me so much redstone. Die lava boys, die, feel my pain. Well, I would say that's a successful trip. We completely filled out all our inventory space. The next day, even though I was back home, I didn't want the fun to stop. That's why I just spent today taking out all these items and putting it in my old storage system. And now we're organized again. Day 473, you're probably asking why you're repairing your armor. It's because I'm getting ready for a boss fight. My Switch guy was telling me if I killed these squids from my Squidzooka that it would summon like a flying kraken. A flying kraken? What do you think? I'm stupid. But of course I believe them, right? And I try to do it. I spent not one, but two all days trying to do this. So I was already losing hope. 
After killing my final three squids, it just it just started raining. It got dark real fast, and I was actually really scared. What is that? It's a flying squid. What the tentacles? Die, you evil beast! Never return here. But as soon as it appeared, it just disappeared. I didn't even kill it. It just kind of flew away. But on the bright side, I did find this chest in a cloud, and it had something called a ghast pet. Welp, I shouldn't have been introduced into pets because for the next six days, I completely obsessed over them. Turns out there's several pets and the first one I made was a dubstep pet oh yeah dubstep oh it also sends mobs flying backwards the next pet I made was like a summoning pet where I could summon warriors <laughs> this looked really cool but it turns out they're actually really weak this was an interesting one a politically correct pet it just gave me a present and that present turned out to be five gaps so I guess that was a success <laughs> And the banana pet. It's a boomerang and it does so much damage. Look at it go. Go banana, go. Go banana, go. A silverfish pet. This allowed me to go through walls. I could actually go through walls. That is insane. You also don't take suffocation damage, so it could actually be useful. Cheetah pet. Yum. You go super fast, but actually made my screen all zoomed in, so it was kind of annoying. A house pet that literally just teleports me back to my house. Amazing. And if you were wondering, of course there's a creeper pet and he does so much much damage he just boom 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 this is the cutest thing i've ever seen in my life it was a jumping anvil i was losing my mind look at jumpy look at jumpy go look how cute he is sadly he dies after three minutes but at least he lived a happy life there was still one pet that i wanted to make called the illuminati pet but he needed a nether star and i used that one nether star i had on the flying belt that i'm using so that's why i'm gonna be spending another five days but in the nether because i have to find a nether fortress well it should be 10 times easier now that i can fly around well Nope, it was just as hard while I was looking I found like a lot of weird creatures and spawners But no super chest or good loot. Just look at this dude. It's like a flying purple devil I don't even know I found this altar and I didn't know how it works So I just kind of place a head on it and hope something would happen, but nope. Whoa, that looks interesting It's like a pirate ship in the nether. It looks cool, but nothing really cool inside This statue is really cool, but I couldn't mine it for some reason But finally I found myself another fortress and the phone was still going look at this it's like a lava on a one block thing ah uh, yeah and then i went on farming up all those wither skeletons and hopefully it wouldn't take long to get the wither head because there was like looting 50 on my sword and after a little bit of grind bada beam bada boom we got our wither heads boys day 486 i returned to my base and it was time to fight the wither there were so many monsters in my base it's probably because i left the door open i also summoned in all my warriors because i wanted this to be an epic battle and here we go i'm nervous oh my god he's shooting lightning he's summoning gas he's teleporting what kind of wither is this i forgot there's a mod that every time i kill the wither the wither gets much stronger so now he's in like extra drug mode well it only took two strikes for my ultimate sword <laughs> The next day, before I crafted up the Illuminati pet, I checked some other things that I could make with the Nether Star. Look at all this fancy, smancy modded stuff. I don't even know what this stuff is. I did make the Illuminati pet, and he just started freaking out. It was like glitching like crazy. I don't think it's supposed to do this, man. The Illuminati pet's supposed to give me a random item every 10 minutes, but I'm assuming because there's 5,000 mods, it broke it. Sad gamer hours, all that hard work for nothing. The next day, I woke up to this, so my spirits were instantly lifted. My goal today was to mine all day and get all these crystals, so I could expand my EMC system. Luckily, the haste two from the cheetah pet made things way easier. The combination of all those crystals I mined and all of them that I've been growing for the past few weeks, I had a lot of crystals now, so I could upgrade my ME system a lot. Also, I really need to fix up my base. I mean, I'm having Emperor Scorpion spawn right outside. Day 488 was a really weird day because I was just working on my storage system when I went to go out and get sand. What in the... What is this? It's a pink portal right outside my base. I never built this. It just summoned when did this summon what did i do it was definitely Venus, wasn't it i didn't go into the pink portal yet because i'm gonna save it for the end of this hundred days which is in like 13 days or something also there was another blood moon and i couldn't work on everything because i have giant holes all around my base the next day i just worked on my me system pretty boring stuff but after the end of the day i had it i had a 64k drive now i have so much more space Woo, look at that now we have 65k blocks available with only 10 days left in this 
100 day series. I just wanted to clean up on my base a little bit so it wasn't a complete mess. Our underground area looked really ugly, so I thought I would just shake it up a little bit. I wanted to continue the pattern of stone slabs and sandstone because honestly, they're a pretty good combo. That looks 10 times better already. Shaboom, jabam, japow. I'm really loving this design, and honestly, if we did this for every single layer, it would look mwah. I didn't want to spend any more time on my base. I really wanted to go through this pink portal. I'm honestly super nervous. I don't even know what to expect. I mean, I'm ready for battle, and whoa! Oh my goodness, thank God we can fly. What is this place? It's like giant balls of fur everywhere. The piece definitely didn't last long because I was soon encountered by these pink guys, and then these blue guys who were actually pretty strong. They survived like four hits from my ultimate sword. I don't even know what this place is called. It's like, and it's so open. What are all these structures? I went up to each one, but some of them, I didn't even know what they did. They kind of just, I don't know. I was just trying to find the boss, but there was probably a little more to it than I thought. I continue exploring further and there was just a weird structure after a weird structure. And just when you thought it couldn't get weirder, these were villagers. They sounded like villagers. They look nothing like villagers. And I never had peace. I kept on being attacked by these exploding beans. And if you thought exploding beans were bad, these are like lizard men, actual lizard men. Honestly, this is a really weird dimension because after I killed the lizard men, there was like some sort of maze and I hate mazes and I couldn't even break the glass. The glass was made out of bedrock or something. So I actually had to complete the maze. And when I finally did complete it, all I got was a crafting table, an enchantment table. I don't even know. I hated this place and I was already set on leaving. I made one more stop that I thought could be the boss. And no, they're like Cyclops eye boys and they teleport towards me with only four days remaining i thought of a cool place to go which would actually be the end but we'll not be fighting the ender dragon because we already have one of the mods in this mod pack makes the end 10 times bigger and puts 10 times harder bosses in it all we had to do was keep on flying out until we found something and oh my god this place is so creepy there was like these flying dots that sounded like gas and i couldn't even see them there was also some areas where i could actually raid and get some ender pearls and stuff so that was pretty cool after traveling like thousands of blocks i finally found something that looked like land it looked like actually a forest and of course the forest is this nightmare it spawns silverfish and it's super creepy here i don't like the end it's so spooky i flew around the forest to see if there was some sort of boss fight but i didn't see anything special maybe there was something in the forest that i was missing but it was really creepy and it sounded like something was following me but i couldn't see anything and what is this farting disabled what does that even mean you hear that? What is that? I hate this place. I hate this place. Oh my god, everything's so creepy. I left and luckily right outside the forest, there was this giant pillar. And you know what pillars means? Boss fights, right? I mean, I hope this is definitely some sort of boss, right? Oh, we got a boss fight with a flying eye. Yo, he's actually pretty strong and he's making me all disordered. Die, you eye. For some reason, I didn't get the clip where I actually killed him, but I did kill him. He didn't drop anything too epic, but inside his pillar, there was a lot of angry endermen. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this 100 days. If you made it this far, you don't deserve not three, not four, but five gold stars. I will be releasing a full tour of my base and everything that we've done in these 500 days. If it's already out, it's going to be one of these end screens that are being shown right now. And if you're still listening, please check out my second channel. I put just as much time on my second channel as I do on my main channel. So I promise the content will be good. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great New Year's and until next time.